I'm Rick Hope and this is 123 Tube and today I'm going to do a video on this home cinema kit that I've just purchased. Now I'm going to do a bit of an unboxing and then final thoughts. I don't normally do this sort of thing but uh, when I purchase something online I always like to watch as many videos as possible and uh, read as many reviews as possible and there just wasn't really anything out there on this product. Uh, the product being the LG LHB645N Home Cinema Kit. Now I've purchased this, um, well, well, the obvious reason I've purchased it is, is I want much better sound quality when uh, sat down watching uh, movies at night in my man cave. Um, but the other reason is is uh, a lot of the Home Cinema Kits, the, the, the main unit, the boxes are just so large they don't actually fit into my shelving. So this, is, this was one of the few uh, home cinema kits that actually fit the bill, would fit in uh, underneath the, uh, the space of my television uh, within the cabinet. So uh, that's kind of one of the reasons I went for it. Plus it matches the TV, it's the same brand. But yeah, there was literally nothing out there. There was the odd picture, uh, there was a couple of unboxings, but they weren't really very, very good. Not that this is going to be particularly amazing. Um, but the reviews were just user reviews and, and they were pretty use, useless. They were given the uh, the product one star out of five because there was no HDMI in the box or the speakers weren't Wi-Fi, uh, whatever that's supposed to mean. I assume they mean wireless, so they were just looking at the wrong model. So, you know, it, it wasn't much help. So uh, I'm going to unbox it and... Um, We'll have a look at the uh, item and then in the end we'll uh, we'll just see if it's better than the soundbar that it's replacing which will end up in uh, the living room. So yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, so we have a bag of bits. Uh, Start the instruction manual, a battery, and what I assume is the FM radio uh, antenna. So there's that. We have some bolts and cabling. So I assume that's to put the speakers together, the uh, tall boy speakers, and some cables there. We have the remote control, which ah, looks like a remote control. And oh, I hate polystyrene. Okay, so what do we have here? This is obviously the main unit. And might have to edit this down a bit because some bits will be rather boring but and there it is not the prettiest looking thing but there we go it fits into the slot which is exactly what I was looking for so that's a good start so there's the main unit We've got the DVD player there which I won't really use I might do occasionally, but uh, I generally stream stuff. And uh, there's the rear of the unit. So we've got the speaker connection, subwoofer connector, LAN, HDMI out. That uh, supports ARC, the audio return channel. Got analog input, optical input, and the antenna. So it's quite basic, but. Really, it's all that it needs for, for my needs. So, as far as the PlayStation goes, it will send its signal to the TV and the TV will then just return it back to this unit here. Um, so, less cables, the better, as far as I'm concerned. So, there's that. Okay, what we have next? So, we have...
the speaker base. So they're actually quite substantial feel and quite hefty. So two of those, because there's two tall boys and two small satellite speakers with this system. So two of those. Okay. This certainly feels like the subwoofer. There we go. There's the subwoofer. And uh, yeah, not really too much to say about it other than it's nice and slim, which is ideal because it's going to go right into the corner of the room. Uh, so that's probably a, quite a good design choice, really. Because um, a lot of these items are just very bulky. I wonder if this comes off. No, it doesn't look like it comes off. But yeah, it's subwoofer. And it's designed to go uh, at the front of the room next to the TV to fire outwards towards you. But yeah, not much to say about that. Okay, so one of the satellite speakers and Yeah, it looks really quite nice. Very nice indeed. Yep, yeah, I really do like that. So there's no screwing uh, support for it. It's literally just kind of a screw hanging type of connector. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. Which is fine. So. Yep, like the look of that. And here we have what looks to be the centre speaker. So there's the centre speaker. Speaker in the centre, two ports there. I don't know if they're actual ports or just aesthetics. And yeah, little rubber mounts there, which is good. Stop it vibrating. And bog standard springy connectors. So that's the sense speaker. Okay. So here we have the other satellite speaker. Don't need to see that again. Okay, so. These are the tall boy speakers. So that would sit in the base and speakers sit in the top. So let's grab one of those. did wonder if that top bit swivels, but no it doesn't, it's firmly connected. So looks like you can just hang it on the wall as is. Spring connections and that literally just mounts on like so. And then obviously that sits on the base and that's your Poor boy speaker and that's pretty much it. Yep, so that's the uh, the unboxing. It was 
highly exciting. But uh, I know that something like this really does help people out there because it's nice to just see how things fit together. And, um, you know, a simple question like uh, what are the connections on the back of the speakers? You know, something like that can make all the difference. So, um, yeah, let me put this all together and then uh, I'll just give my final thoughts on does it sound much, much better than my soundbar, which is a decent soundbar? Um, and was it worth uh, the investment? So let's crack on. OK, so the home cinema kit is now set up, as you can see. We have speakers either side of the TV. And we also have the subwoofer as well. And behind the lazy boy seats, we have the surround sound speakers. Now, ideally the surround sound speakers would be further apart at a distance, but we have to work with what we've got uh, in the room, the setup of the room. And I have uh, lived with the uh, system for a couple of days now, and I have to say, it sounds absolutely incredible. Uh, really does sound very, very, very good. Um, now the sound bar was good, it's a big improvement on the television, uh, the television speakers, but yeah, a home cinema kit is still, if you want the full immersive sound, really the home cinema kit is the only way forward. So um, as far as sound goes, yeah, it's massively better. But um, I'll just show you how I quickly set it up, the settings that I use in case uh, you end up uh, getting one of these yourself or you have one already. Okay, so let's start with the home cinema kit. I would recommend connecting it up via HDMI so you can use the audio return channel if your TV supports this feature. If not, uh, optical cable is also another option. So if we go into settings, um, it's quite straightforward. Um, I don't actually use the Blu-ray player uh, in this unit, uh, so I haven't set up this side of things. And the most important part uh, for me is the audio side of things. So the digital output should be on auto. Um, as standard, uh, when I set the, uh, the unit up, it was on PCM. You don't want this. Uh, you want it on auto, so it auto selects uh, Dolby Digital, DTS and so forth. So make sure it's on that setting. And DRC is also enabled when you turn it on. Now this should really be turned off. It basically prevents sudden volume increases and uh, really you don't want that. You want you know the quiet subtle scenes and then you want the big uh, sort of like big bangs if you've got the action sequences and, and that kind of dulls it down, neutralizes it almost. So once again, make sure that's off. And then you go in to the speaker setup. You can tell it how uh, far away you're sat from each speaker. So in my case, one and a half meters for pretty much all of them bar the center speaker, which is a little bit closer. And obviously the rear speakers uh, I've got at one foot, so 0.3 meter distance. And to give it a slightly better surround effect, I've increased the volume by uh, one it goes up to four but I found one is perfect other than that everything else is just set to default so you can here adjust the audio so if it's slightly out of sync uh, with uh, whatever you're watching uh, you can adjust it but most TVs nowadays especially if you're using HDMI uh, audio return channel it should auto sync so that is it basically. Um, I would do a demo of the sound but it's absolutely pointless because I'm recording from a camcorder and it, it just wouldn't sound good via YouTube. Uh, as I said, it's not really the sort of video I'd normally do. Uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. I hope that helps someone somewhere out there.